Hello, my name is Marcello Savati, and I'm going to be giving you a very basic intro to Docker. Uh, and I'm a threat researcher here at Protect AI. And the reason why I'm giving this intro is because I feel like it would be helpful to a lot of the people on Hunter to know how to use Docker. And the reason for this is because it allows you to really quickly and easily spin up uh, I guess, uh, projects on GitHub and tools on GitHub to actually perform security research on them. Uh, and the reason why this is uh, really useful is because you don't have to deal with a Python. Py a lot of the projects on Hunter are built in Python and Node. Uh, and the reason why using uh, knowing how to use Docker is very important, or at least very useful, is because it allows you to avoid all the dependency issues of Node and the Python ecosystems and allow you to really quickly just easily spin up these projects. And for this tutorial, uh, I'm going to be using uh, Anything LLM here as a way of, of just showing you how to use Docker. Anything LLM is an all-in-one AI app that's on Hunter, and you can uh, find bugs in it right now and get paid for it on Hunter. And, allows, and basically, it's just a UI interface to a bunch of LLMs, as the name implies. Uh, so what we're going to do first is go over some basics of Docker. So Docker, first off, is a runtime. And what does that mean? It's basically just a program that runs on your computer. and uh, Docker was made in order to basically solve the it works on my machine problem. So it allows you to take a application, package it up in a way uh, that the Docker runtime is able to run. And then from there, as long as you have Docker desktop or the Docker runtime installed on a server, uh, you should be able to, or on, a, on your laptop, obviously not just a server, you should be able to run it without any issues uh, when it comes to dependencies or anything else really that you encounter usually when trying to install Python programs, for example. Um, so there's two main fundamental concepts uh, of Docker, Docker containers and Docker images. Uh, Docker images are essentially a template that defines your application and all of its dependencies. And if you've seen uh, a Docker file in a repository before, that's what this is for. It's basically a file that allows you to build uh, the Docker image. And then a container is just a running instance of the Docker image. Uh, so when you run a Docker container, it just takes the image and just basically runs it. So the first thing that you want to do is uh, identify the project that you want to run. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm just going to show you with, I'm just going to demonstrate this with anything LLM. Uh, sometimes they put the actual command that you have to run to actually pull the image down from Docker Hub uh, in the readme. But if not, you can just go to Google and put anything LLM uh, Docker Hub. And if you're not familiar with what Docker Hub is, it's basically just a, uh, it's basically just a, it's basically the equivalent of like PyPy. It's just a package repository for Docker images, basically. Uh, you can host your own too, but Docker, the actual Docker, the company that makes Docker, uh, uh, made Docker Hub, which is the sort of the de facto repo image repository for um, most things. So we can see here that uh, anything LLM is on uh, is on the is on Docker Hub. And the, uh, to pull this, all we have to do is take the name of the project to pull the image and just do docker pull uh, minplex labs anything slash anything LM. And this will pull the image, the latest image from uh, Docker Hub this way. I already did this so that you don't have to wait through the whole downloading process, uh, but it usually takes a couple of minutes. Uh, then after that, uh, you want to verify uh, that you, we, we actually did pull uh, successfully the, uh, the image. So if you do Docker images, we see a list of all the images that you currently have installed, uh, that, installed uh, that you pulled from Docker Hub. Uh, and we can verify that, yeah, and we did indeed pull the anything LM image. And now we want to run the application. So uh, in this case, usually uh, projects provide you with a way of uh, like some sort of instructions to do this. Uh, if I recall, anything LLM has a how to use Docker file here, which provides you a very complicated Docker command uh, to, uh, to actually run it with all the default configuration. Uh, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to simplify this for everybody and just use the docker run command here in this, uh, in this section of the, the how to use Docker tutorial here. Uh, and I'm just going to break down the arguments. So uh, what this, uh, this docker run command is doing is basically saying, hey, uh, I want I want Docker to run the uh, anything LM image, right? And I want to forward port 3001 from the uh, running container to your uh, laptop. So this way you can access the anything LM web UI. 
Uh, and this dash D argument is just basically saying to run in the background. I'm gonna get rid of that so that we see uh, it's scrolling, all the logs scrolling and stuff. So uh, what we did here is we ran the anything LM image and we now have a container that's starting up. Uh, and you can see this, these are, this is just the output of all of, the, all of the logs and all of the setup process of anything LLM. Uh, this seems to be started. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna head over to our browser and then put in localhost 3001, which is the port that we forwarded from anything LM. And here we go, we got anything LM spin up. Um, again, this is like a super simple tutorial. Uh, if you see here in the, in the actual anything LM uh, setup, anything LM Docker guide here, uh, you'll see that there's a much more complicated command, which is uh, basically initializing Docker volumes, which allows you to share files between, uh, between your uh, container and your laptop. But this is this is just meant as a quick and dry way to uh, get you started with Docker. Uh, obviously, like there is a, a cheat code, quote unquote, which is just to use the GUI as well. So Docker on Mac and on Linux, uh, if you install Docker Desktop, uh, has a GUI which you can basically do uh, most things that you can do on the Cli uh, in the GUI, or at least inspect containers, images, and all this stuff. Uh, for the sake of security research, though. Uh, another thing that we, we might want to talk about too is how to exec into a container. So by execing into a container, I mean actually getting a shell inside the container. Uh, and the reason for this is because say you have like a, you, the reason why this is useful is say you have like an LFI, you discovered an LFI, you want to make sure, or like a remote file read, uh, or remote file write rather. Um, and you want to make sure that the actual, ex your exploit succeeded and you want to see if a file was written uh, to the, uh, on, on disk of the actual application. Well, in a container, uh, you're gonna have to exec in the container to actually see if that file was written. And the way to do this is using the exec command. And this allows you to just basically get a shell inside of a running container. Uh, so we do docker exec slash ti, which basically pipes standard input output to your shell so that you get an interactive shell this way. Uh, and then you give it the container ID that you wanna exec in, followed by the, uh, the actual program that you wanna exec. So in this case, bash, because we wanna get a shell. Uh, and you can see that this, uh, this C14F00 ID, this is just the container ID. It's a little big here, so I'm just gonna uh, do this so that it's a little easier to read. Uh, but yes, this is the actual container ID of the running um, Implex Lab Anything LLM uh, image. So if we do that, uh, we now, you see that we're inside the container, there's a shell, uh, and we can, uh, we can just explore the file system of the running container this way. And you can also inspect the source code, for example, to check if like if, if a different bug or like a bug is what you expected, or inspect the logs. So this is a very very useful. And that's pretty much it. Uh, so this is just again like a super simple tutorial on Docker and how to get started with it. And again, like this is super useful for security researchers. And I hope hunters use Docker a lot more because it avoids the uh, painful process of setting up an AI project, especially the ones that aren't as mature as others, because a lot of them are experimental in some ways. And it also helps helps too if you know how to use Docker and you give us recommend uh, you give us the actual setup guide on how you actually set up uh, the uh, project uh, on a hunter report because this way we get the triage it faster and we all win uh, so thank you that's it